Michael. What is it, exposition dog? Can't you see that I'm studying from Native American lit final? Have you ever stopped to think about the ways Italians are portrayed in media and film? You know, it's interesting you say that, exposition dog. I was just thinking about all the different ways Italian Americans have been portrayed. It's quite interesting, actually. has never been very good at welcoming any immigrating party, whether it was the Irish or the Spanish, and especially not the Italians. And as a result, a lot of stigma and poverty did follow Italian Americans as they came over to the States, and for partially good reason. I mean, the Americans didn't so much like the fact that there was only a 50% literacy rate amongst the Italians immigrating into their country, and they also didn't like some of their rather radicalist ideas on capitalism. But that was no reason to do any of the following. Of one thing to mention, between the period of 1890 and 1920, there were at least 50 lynchings related to Italians that went on to be called hate crimes. In addition, the very reputable source and historical source, such as the New York Times, valid, villainized Italian Americans in ways unimaginable, calling them in one direct quote. These sneaky and cowardice Sicilians, the descendants of bandits and assassins who have transported to this country the lawless passions, the cutthroat practices, and the oath-bound societies of their naive country. And that justifies the lynching of those 50 people between 1890 and 1920. As a result, the American public so much did not like Italian Americans and found their customs of fragrant colors, even more fragrant smelling foods, to be quite odd and displeasing. And it wasn't until the, I want to say the mid-1900s that Italians even began to see more respect amongst immigrants and American culture in general. And the negative effects upon the stigma that did follow Italian Americans during the early 20th century and late 19th century didn't just stop at physical harassment. They were also put into slums, almost like redlining did for the African American public. It, they did something relatively similar with um, Italian Americans kind of confining them to specific regions and areas of cities, such as New York City, and that is how they ended up with districts such as the quote-unquote Italian district, where not only were wages much lower than in other areas of the city for these specific people, but it also limited their ability to move out, thus confining them to a type of slavery and servitude, and only further cementing their non-maneuverability once they immigrated to the States. And this is not portrayed well in the media, as I already mentioned, the New York Times, especially during this time, was no better and especially not less biased than any other media source. And it's one of those things that they try to push under the carpet and hope that people
Yo, man, I don't know what you're doing. You're wasting time. Time's money, dude. This is my wage for the day. All right, we can't be wasting it. The reason of bringing up wages in America for Italian Americans doesn't just concern Italian Americans. It actually is an overall issue that plagued most of immigrants coming from Europe. Specifically speaking to Italian Americans, there were a couple big reasons that played into their immigration during this time period. The 19th century brought about an agricultural crisis where a disease called phylax destroyed a lot of the grapes and other main crops of many of the farmlands around Italy. Now, with that happening, the peak of immigration for Italian Americans happened in 1907, where 285,731 people immigrated to the U.S. in hope of seeking a better life and a better fortune. Now, comparing the wages to Italy and America, especially during this time period, we can do this comparison. An Italian farmer, if staying during this time, can expect to make a salary between 16 and 30 cents a day. And a carpenter, during the same time period, could expect to make a, a wage of 30 cents to a dollar 40 a day. Now, compare that to a carpenter's wage in the United States, where a carpenter could come over to the U.S. during this time period and receive an $18 salary for a 56-hour work week. The numbers there are uncomparable, and as a result, it was a much safer and much better move to trust in the dream that America did provide for many people. Hence why it also makes sense for me to record this section at my own job, where I make a little bit above the minimum wage, but it makes for a good contrast in comparison to the portrayals of jobs that were around for Italian Americans within media such as steel workers, fa factory workers, or field workers within farms all across America. These jobs did assist in the situation and living capacity of Italian immigrants and Italian Americans once they had fully become settled into a society here in America. Hey, yo, hey, yo, what's going on, Jersey Nation? It's me, DJ Mikey B, coming at you again with another banger. We're gonna throw some real trap music down on all y'all. Let's get this stuff started. For another disclaimer and news flash. The people casted for the Jersey Shore are not actually from New Jersey. They are from Long Island, New York. So the entire misconceptions of not only New Jerseyans, but Italian stereotypes that we are angry, juvenile, and overall disobedient to lawmakers within our current era is all founded off of the actions of fake Jerseyans, but real fake Italian actors. The characters within the Jersey Shore are not the only offenders to insult the idea of being an Italian American, for we even have characters that should be a callback to all 90s babies, such as Johnny Bravo of the cartoon series Johnny Bravo, who was supposed to be a direct ripoff of an Italian American immigrant character who is so infatuated with the idea of American women that he will pursue them to the ends of the planet. Now, the idea of that not only sickens me, but I find to be a total insult to what it can mean and what it does mean to be an Italian-American, considering what we have gone through up to this point in our history. Man, I'm starving. What we got in here? We got peanut butter, no. We got protein bar, no. Sweet peas, I don't think so. Uh, pasta, yes. 
Straight from Italy, baby. I will be honest. This is a stereotype and portrayal of Italian Americans that is mostly true. Almost all Italian people that I have met, whether fresh off the boat or actually living in America already, love food. And not just Italian food, they love all types of food. But Italian food holds a special place in our heart. Things like spaghetti and meatballs, pasta and bolognese, espresso. These are fantastic things that we associate with Italian food and Italian American food culture. But that's just it. They're just Italian American food culture. Because all the foods that I just mentioned, even including pizza, in part, are not found in Italy. And at least they're not found together. They are strictly Americanized versions of Italian food that was made popularized through the portrayal of media and film. Food that I mentioned, even including things like garlic bread, pepperoni, and chicken and veal parm are American Italian food. And I mentioned pizza even before being an Americanized food. And that makes it so much more interesting that considering just New York City, there is estimated to be a 32,000 different pizzeria joints where people go to experience legit Italian food and the legit Italian experience. And yet, it's not. It is an Americanized version, popularized through film and media, to be, or seem to be, the real taste of Italy. Hey, I'm walking here! Ooh, the classic portrayal of the angry New Yorker. I'm going to just totally disregard the statement of angry for a moment to discuss later and just focus on the Italian portrayal of New Yorkers in general. Now, yes, New York was an especially important location for Italian immigration as it was the centralized hub for all immigration in the United States. As already stated earlier, there was an excess of 273,000 people that migrated in just 1907 alone and that provided Italian Americans with one of the greatest opportunities available to them to have the dream of not living life on a farm. Now, it was a poll taken during this time that provided people with the question as if they were coming here to work in a farm, in an industry, or in construction. And a majority of the Italian workers or immigrants that did answer these polls said that they were not coming here to farm. Rather, that they were coming here to work with hope that in a year to two year period that they could actually immigrate back to Italy. This was not the case for about 70% of the Italian immigration population. Population. For only between 20 to 30 percent of people that found themselves immigrating to America from Italy actually found themselves finding their way back at any capacity. Instead, there was a high demand for Italian construction jobs and a high demand for Italian industrial workers jobs. And so, Italian people were there to fit the boot and help build the wonderful foundation that New York City was founded upon. Come on! Come on, let's go! I mean... Come on, let's get moving! Let's get it! Come on, let's go! Ridiculous amateur hour. Nobody knows how to merge. Right. To try and quickly sum up the debate slash conversation on Italian emotional display and rage, yes. This is probably the second stereotype 
that I actually agree with because as far as the backgrounds go, Spanish is probably all the way up here, but in a close second place, there is nothing quite like an Italian person's angry fill of rent. Coming from a man that has had his grandfather threaten to beat him on multiple occasions and his mother threaten to disown him, all the while making exacerbating <laughs> hand motions, it is real, it is unfortunate, and it is a stereotype that is properly portrayed within film and media. <laughs> So let me rightly begin by talking about one thing that is a major annoyance to a lot of Italian culture, especially about the portrayal of mob and Italian affairs within the mob. Scarface is not a movie about the Italian mob. Scarface is a Cuban character from a Cuban background, so get your facts straight. We see such amazing movies out today about the Italian Mafia and mob portrayals, such as The Goodfellas, The Family, Casino, even The Godfather, that all try to capture the essence of what it really meant to be in the Italian-American Mafia. But that's just not quite the full range of power that the Mafia did hold in the early 20th century in America. The original Italian Mafia didn't even start in America. It started in Sicily, and it was a group of different families that were combined together to try and defend themselves against the normally aggressive Sicilian invaders and cultures that came upon Sicily Island. It wasn't until the 1920s where a totally subdivision of Mafia even began, the American Italian Mafia, that began to truly rake in the big bucks during the era of prohibition where they were soliciting prop prostitution, loan sharking, casino rigging, and all these amazing money schemes that allowed for them the opportunity to run multiple cities from under. Speak more on the New Yorker portrayal. For almost all the mob movies that have already been mentioned, and all major portrayals of Italian-Americans in general, especially movies, start in Italy and then transfer their way to New York. Ultimately, though, through being portrayed as these mobsters, greedy, and overall snakish figures in such prominent movies as mentioned earlier, Italians have been labeled as all being mafia, or all being associated with mafia ties, and this is simply not true. However, I do have a cousin that would tend to think 